my precious little eggies, today we're going to talk about red scaled film. I'm not going to lie to you guys, making this video kind of felt like watching someone come up and take a huge dump in my Quaker oatmeal squares. That's my favorite cereal by the way. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I'll explain why along the way. But for starters, red scaled film. What the hell is even that? I'm going to borrow this explanation from Lomography, the link is in the description below. Your average 35mm color negative film has a semi-transparent layer on the back, designed to keep stray light from getting onto the sensitive emulsion on the front. At some point, a few bright photographers got the idea to load the film backwards and actually shoot through this protective layer. The result is close to shooting through a reddish-orange filter, but unlike a filter, the effect is a bit unpredictable and varies in strength depending on the subject and light source. So this video was meant to be a head-to-head -head comparison. I loaded up my Mamiya 645 with Lomography Red Scale 120, and I loaded up my Pentax K1000 with Ultramax. Now this film was re-spooled by my friend Chris from the channel Film is More Fun. He sent that over to me along with another collaborative project that we're working on that I need to do that I totally have not been uh, sleeping on or anything like that. Sorry, Chris. Now here's the dilemma. I did no research. Sh shocker, that's that's shocking. I did absolutely no research, so I was under the impression that Lomography Red Scale was something like an effect, kind of like Lomochrome Purple. It actually is re-spooled film. So joke's on me, this was gonna be a comparison, and uh, they're basically the same thing. Just different formats, 35mm and 120. So rather than a head head comparison, this is a showcase. I ended up rating the 35mm at ISO 200, but the whole roll came out pretty underexposed. Turn up the grain, am I right? I might aim to overexpose a bit more in the future. And by might, I mean I will. Second reason this video cracked my yolks, I had just tons of fun scanning the film. Our Lady of Perpetual Dust over here kept doing that thing where it would introduce the dreaded magenta line across my scans. So 7,000 scans later, I was ready to go into Negative Lab Pro. Enter the third reason why this video made me the opposite of psyched. I had a lot of trouble getting the colors right. I spent time messing around and honestly I just wasn't very happy with my results. Weirdly it felt like Negative Lab Pro almost thought of these like Lomochrome Purple and made everything way more magenta. So I ultimately ended up letting Epson scan take the wheel. I know, it's blasphemy, but honestly, I got some pretty wild colors, especially from the 35mm roll. I lost the film borders, but screw it. They're dead and you're not. The 35mm shots also figured out by the Epson scan are way redder, almost like Joji's album cover red. I really dig the red Tones. This shot of Corey is probably my favorite out of the bunch. I actually managed this look by hitting him with a red LED light. Is that still coming out tomorrow? <laughs> we were filming a music video, so we were kind of there. This was just like a last minute shot before we were leaving the location. And the outtakes, that's what we're really here for. The outtakes are priceless. <laughs> These are some of the remaining 120 film scans that I edited with Negative Lab Pro. While these might not be the most red scaly looking, <laughs> red scaly makes me think of a giant red lizard, they actually do make me think of Breaking Bad Season 2, and that's absolutely a good thing in my book. I gotta say, I think I prefer the look that the Epson scan software gave the 35mm film over the 120 film. The Epson scan software just, I don't know, it wasn't really doing it for me. It doesn't look all that different than what I was coming up with in Negative Lab Pro, although it is a little bit more magenta. So whose tones look better? Mine or Epson's? Let me know in the comments below. Yo, if you pick the Epson scan, I swear to god I will come over there and I will no longer call you my precious little eggy. Also, shout out to my buddy Jacob for taking these photos. I actually really like this shot of me, and I'm not particularly one who likes being on camera, so thanks, go check out his channel. Before we start wrapping this video up, I just have one last question for you. What if we held hands by the Stanford Blockbuster sign in red scale? Just kidding. Unless... Alright, well on that lovely note, it's about time we wrap up this video. I definitely had a lot of fun shooting this film, and it was a big learning experience for me. I do intend on shooting more red scale film in the future. I honestly might just go with Lomography though, and not have to worry about respooling it myself, because I know me, and I will probably uh, mess that up. But what do you guys think? What do you think of the editing? If you have any tips on scanning it, please let me know in the comments below. Don't be shy, I, I know you won't be, so. But do you have a preference? Do you prefer the way that Epson figured things out? Do you prefer the negative? 
Negative Lab Pro Root. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm very curious because this is something that's very new to me as well. Mega huge shout out to Chris from Film Is More Fun for giving me the role of film. Huge shout out to Corey for helping me film this video. And of course, a huge shout out to Jacob for being there, for taking my portrait, all that fun stuff. Make sure you check them out. Everybody's link will be in the description below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a share, a like, a comment, give me a subscribe, all that fun stuff. And make sure you find me on the social medias. I am out there except for Facebook. Uh, fuck that. And uh, yeah, I will catch you in the next one. All right, bye. Like and subscribe. Sweet Lou Photography. Dumb man.